Revelation 1417. From the 13th of May 1940. Mental Activity. Mind. Images. The human being's thinking apparatus resembles the blank pages of a book as long as it is not active, that is, as long as the intellectual capacity is not developed yet, thus as long as the human being is not yet capable of formulating thoughts. At the tender age of infancy, the thinking organs are not yet active and it requires a certain time until the human brain starts to take in outside impressions. And this happens as follows. The human eye imparts an observed image to the human being's thinking apparatus, the brain, and this begins its actual activity by allowing the imparted image to take effect on a highly sensitive retina. This receives the image and conscious impressions occur which emerge in the human being as thoughts and effectively are thus retroactive effects of the image in the human brain. Every impression, in turn, makes itself identifiable on the hitherto empty space of the cerebral cortex and can remain indelibly engraved for long times. But it can also become unrecognizable through new impressions and vanish into the unconscious mind, hence no longer entering a person's consciousness. As long as the human being is alive, constantly new layers keep forming for the purpose of receiving and reflecting new impressions. However, the sensitivity increasingly lessens, therefore the images will no longer stand out so clearly in the receptive area and therefore are no longer able to impart the impressions to the thinking apparatus as strongly, which manifests itself as forgetfulness, as less intellectual capacity and as a reduction of receptivity for impressions which require a certain amount of concentration then the thinking apparatus will only work slowly, the external impressions are no longer capable of causing increased activity, the images will no longer be clearly imparted to the cerebral cortex and the whole mental activity starts to slow down. The human being will no longer be able to effortlessly and easily recall individual occurrences because the images have become indistinct and blurred, nevertheless, they will be able to describe early or occurrences precisely because these images are indelibly and clearly inscribed in his consciousness and can even be brought to light from earliest childhood, because the thinking apparatus can be impressed by these clear images and thus every image appears in the form of thoughts. The process of mental activity can be likened to a constant diving down and fetching up where it concerns earlier experiences. Countless images are engraved in countless thin layers, every empty and blank space has been covered by impressions imparted by the human eye, and countless spaces have been covered by mental images which a penetrating image from outside may appear again. The mental function of the designated organs is therefore an inherent activity, brought about through external impressions and implemented through the person's will to allow this or that image to take an effect on him. These images need not always penetrate him through the eyes, spiritual images can also trigger the same process, which the human being conjures up through his will and which thereby trigger an associated mental activity. These organs are therefore first prompted to become active through a person's will and the thoughts subsequently take the direction which corresponds to the person's will. Purely earthly interests and imaginations will, understandably, only impart these kinds of images to the cerebral cortex, and thus the mental activity will therefore express itself such that only thoughts which correspond to these earthly notions will dominate a person. The human being's train of thought is always in agreement with his will. The will determines his mentality. And this is why the human being is also responsible for his thoughts, since it is up to him to impart images to his spiritual eye, regardless of what kind they are. But he should not forget 
that too many earthly images reduce the capacity for impressions and that it is therefore to his own disadvantage if the mental activity reduces accordingly and, in the end, is no longer receptive to spiritual truths, that is mental transmissions. All thoughts will therefore only ever express that which moves a person most. And thus the human being, having been furnished with all abilities by the divine creator, which also includes the mental activity, is fully responsible for his thoughts, because it is up to him to formulate them according to his will. Amen.